Okay, morning guys, welcome to day three, week three of the Guildford City Fitness live stream. Thanks again for everyone who's been participating on the social media platforms, sharing all the challenge times, and a big congratulations and well done to everyone again from MPS for their effort they put in during the Zoom, the Zoom group uh, gathering yesterday. It was really cool to see you guys putting in the work um, and some incredibly fast up downs. I don't think that was even possible. So well done to everyone for the arm dexterity, I guess. Um, today's session is going to be the same as the last couple of Wednesdays, a little bit of an extra aerobic hit from the start to the beginning, so it's going to feel more like a running type session with a bit of core conditioning. So we're going to get going straight into the warm up. So start with the ground, bend the arm across, six reps on each side. Make sure you've had a drink, make sure the warm up area is nice and clear, so you've got plenty of room to do what you have to do. And then we're going to go in three, two, one. Let's go. So maybe as you go through, start changing your leg position a little bit. So if you're trying to do a straight leg, if you've got space. Make sure your shoulders stay flat on the ground so you feel it in the same place each time if you don't change your leg position. Okay, then we'll go angry cat, happy cat. You get six reps of each. Sorry, six reps in total, so up and down. Make sure that curve is coming as much in the bottom of your back as it is the top. So even if you don't get as much of a rise up here, it's more important to try and feel that stretch than in this part of your back. Okay, then up into a bit of jogging. In two, one. <clears throat> so as always, just 15 seconds, starting to build your heart rate up. And stop. Then we'll go into one, we'll walk out. So touch your toes. Out. Now, again, make sure when you come out to here, you're trying not to stand up. So you're keeping that tension on your hamstrings. Just try and see if you can sink a bit lower each time when you go back to the start. And then leg swings. You just keep double checking the space around you. And then side to side, same leg. Try to keep your hips facing forward the whole time so that you don't spin out as you swing it to the side. Switch legs, again, making sure that you don't round your lower back to get more reach to keep that flat rather than this. Again, spatial length is very important. Side to side. <clears throat> it's fine if I've gone too wrong, I'll be able to buy a new TV. Right? No? Apparently not. No. <laughs> okay, back into jogging in two, one. I can't remember who it was, but I don't know if anyone saw the live stream of that guy who ran a marathon in his garden. It took him like seven hours. I started feeling a bit like that, doing all this jogging on the spot. Okay, relax there. And then upper body. 
it's all those scat press for six reps push your spine as high as you can even if you hold the top try and take your fingers off the ground and just push through the heel of your hand and then we're going to try and do floor slides so you use a wall I tried using the door but that gets in the way so you're going to lie legs in the air like you're going to do a dead bug elbows on the ground try and get your wrists as far down as you can it's not the most impressive range up on me but from here you're going to slide your hands overhead into streamline and as you do it again just trying to keep your wrist on the floor if you tip if your fingertips with your wrists up it takes a lot of the demand away from your rotator cuff so again just trying to get from here see how close you can keep your wrist to the floor the whole time And then the end should feel like the top of an I position from an IYTW. Let's drive your elbows into the floor. And relax. And jog one more time. Then relax. Make sure you've taken a drink. We'll run through the session quickly. Again, if you start to manage any niggles from running or any other conditioning work that you're doing, start to amend sessions. Repeat exercises you're confident with. Make the ones that you're not so confident with a bit simpler. So whether that's push-ups going on your knees, etc. Just listen to your body and respond accordingly. So today's session starts off mountain climbers for 40 seconds. Then you've got a single leg RDL. So that's one foot on the ground, trying to create a T-shape with your body. Just mess around with what your back leg does. Makes it a bit easier if you keep it close. And aim the bottom of your foot up to the ceiling. What? If you want to make it a bit harder, you can do divers. So as you go down, reach overhead. Straight arm plank, so down on your side. Either feet stacked or feet crossed. Wrist on the shoulder, inverted row, into dips, so you can crack a table, straight leg if you can, glute bridge type setup if you can't, and just go up and down if you want to make it harder, try and keep your upper back off the ground until the end of the set, just make sure you're counting your reps to see how much you compared to the last time you did it. And then dips. Table has a nice solid surface. And then make sure you've got a nice straight back. I'm not too close. So straight legs first. As long as you can keep a straight back. If you start to round, limit your depth. And walk off of that. And then bring your feet closer as you have to. The main thing there guys is that your elbow doesn't go too high above your shoulder so you don't impinge it and then you get a lot more push from your triceps and then star jumps to finish off so after all that just into 40 seconds of star jumps or aerobic skipping to keep your heart rate high so give you 10 seconds to finish off the rest of the warm-up pitch you need stretch anything out grab a drink again Demi's using my phone for Facebook today so the comments should be a little less laggy if there's anything that I miss we need to find um, so we're going to mountain climbers in three, two, one, let's go. Again, you're not trying to set the world on fire here. Just make sure that your back stays flat and straight. Hips are under shoulders and your feet leave the ground as you drive up. So you're not doing any feet dragging. Okay, just under, just over 10 seconds left.
drive your hands down to the floor, create more stability, and then relax. For 10 seconds off, single leg audio. In three, two, one, let's go. So again, use your hand on the wall if you have to. So get to here, you start to feel a bit of a stretch in your hamstring. Hold it, drive up into a high knee position like this. Try and balance yourself. And what I'm doing with my arms is just about coordination and find it a bit easier to balance. So it's not necessarily cheating if it makes a difference to how many reps you can do. But again, as long as you keep everything from hip to head organized, relax. 10 second gap, switch sides. So again, hopefully as you go through, you find that it's not troubling your ankle as much and it's much more controlled throughout your hip. Let's go. So like I said, you can go straight leg. You want to find that a bit easier. Bend your leg so that it aims up to the ceiling. And as long as this is straight, I'll play straight on this. Yep. Yep. Again, something to bear in mind that as you start to tire out, you might think you're in a good position, but you might not be. So just rely on the feedback of people around you. Use a mirror if you've got one. Relax. So straight arm plank, left side. Two, one, let's go. Line shot. Go back a bit. Thank you. Just trying to get a bit, a bit more camera savvy to make Demi's life easier. <laughs> so again, Tips to make this a bit easier, push your hand down, so rather than just relaxing on top of it, actively push it into the floor, cross your feet for a bit more stability, and then lift your hips up. So then that way, those muscles are gonna be helping a bit more, and your shoulder muscles are actually doing something. Relax. Switch over onto the other side, and if you need a bit more stability, three, two, one, let's go. Put your feet on a flat surface, like a wall or a unit. This is again, you can push your feet into that. It's not cheating if it means that your body position is perfect. So you're gonna start conditioning things to do what they need to do. If you wanna progress this a bit more, dive weight or a little book, hold up over here. Try and be aware of where it is in space. Just try and condition that off stance shoulder. And three, two, one, relax. Inverted row, grab your table. In three, two, one, let's go. So you're gonna challenge yourself. Try not to touch the ground. If you do touch the ground, make sure you get up longer holds at the top. Try to get your elbows pulled down to the ground the whole time instead of flaring out. And keep your hips up the whole time. So rather than relax down here, it makes it a lot harder to get things going. Two, one, relax. Next you want the dips. So two, one, let's go. Oh, wrist feels a bit weird from doing the planks. So you're gonna find that position where you know your back's straight. You know your shoulders are lined up properly. See so a straight leg is a lot harder, 
but you just want to concentrate on what's happening at your elbow and your shoulder and your core. If your wrist starts to feel weird, that might just dip there. Just go into a kneeling narrow push up. Just so long as you feel all the work is being done by the back to your arm. Start jumps to finish the round in two, one, let's go. Skin, arms overhead, just makes the aerobic demands a little bit higher. Just because your upper body's doing a bit of something as well. Make sure as well that your toes turn out and your knees follow when you go out. Make sure you go wide enough so you're conditioning both sides of your hip evenly. See a lot of that in pre pull sometimes. Keep it nice and even, concentrate on every rep. And relax. The two minutes off, take a drink. So if someone else has come across that as well, if you find that your wrist is starting to give you some aggravation on the straight arm plank, just go with forearm. I might do that and try and drop in when I can. Because it's more important, again, if, if it's going to stop your wrist from being able to do dips or something else, that you just try and challenge a forearm in a different way. So I'll probably go for like a, a leg raise. So at least I'm still working on holding my core position, but I'll probably get a bit more hip conditioning instead of shoulder. It's not like that drastic a change. I'm speaking from experience, I know some people struggle if they can't do the session that's written in front of them, but just having that adaptability really helps you get out of a jam when you're trying to maintain like your focus on a goal. So that's about a minute gone, 40 odd seconds left. Just grab a drink. Make sure you're walking around, trying to sit down. Like I said before, because it'll be a lot harder to recover in between rounds. And for this one, you actually want to try and make sure your heart rate stays a little bit higher than resting. Just so it means that you're going to get as much aerobic benefit as you can. As long as you're sweaty and your heart rate's high, your body's going to adapt accordingly. Okay, last 20 seconds. Make sure your kit's all where you need it to be. I'm just second guessing myself for some reason. And again, any comments to be able to get them live because we're walking on two phones. So last 10 seconds, mountain climbers again. So three, two, one, let's go. If you start to struggle with holding that back position and you want to drop your feet, just come up onto standing, go with high knee. You can try and incline it. So if you go with an incline one, on a stable surface. Relax. Single leg audio. So again, even that bit of incline just makes it a bit easier on here. Might fill in your abs a bit more. Two, one, go. I got a lot of people start to switch off when it comes to the core part of this. They'll try and find range and just slouch. And you feel the stretch in your hamstring, but again, it's not gonna work it in the way you want it to. So you think about that. When you're trying to think about lead leg mobility on the blocks, if you can find that position with an engaged core, your body starts to get used to relax. 
gets used to having to bend your hip and keep your legs straight. So that becomes a transferable skill. So three, two, one, go. <coughs> so even if you only get to here with a really good straight leg, that's the next thing to chase. It's much easier if you bend your knee, push your lower to the floor, but you want to condition that. Condition your lead leg to be straight with a bent hip. Your best bet is to just control that range. Hold it and come back up. The slower you do it, the harder it becomes. Let me say, if you want to make it even harder, go hands out. Relax there. Tan off, you're going to go straight on plank. I'm going to go forward until my left wrist feels a bit weird. Two, one, go. So again, the table's in the way, but I'm going to make this a bit harder. Go for a leg raise. Not a lot. Just up and down, drop in and out as you need to. Make sure your elbow's under your shoulder. Ten or fifteen seconds left. So try that out. <clears throat> Gets a bit better. Relax. Switch sides. Okay. Three, two, one, let's go. So again, if you're really brave and you want to turn this into a star plank, you can try. So just same position, start slowly lifting your leg up. I'm just going to drop down so I've got an even amount of time to overdevelop. Nice and symmetrical. But again, the same thing with the other. Push your elbow down. Helps engage these muscles a little bit more. End of this. Uh, one in, two, one. Relax. Inverted row and dip. In, three, two. One, go. Again, feet further away, increase the challenge. Which means your base of support is further from the center of mass or your belly button. So it's like adding weight to the bar. <clears throat> Last 10 seconds. <clears throat> and relax there. Going into the dips. Developing some living room agility as well. In two, one, let's go. Again, even if you have a bent knee, what you do, go for those slow eccentrics, which everyone loves. Check your shoulder and elbow height. Push up. So it gets about here. Again, hold that position. You'll start to earn and unlock some more range of motion in your shoulders because you're producing force. Keeps your shoulders stable and transfers into other things. Like trying to do handstands. And star jumps to finish this round. In two, one, let's go. Again, just thinking about your feet in knee positions. Make sure they're symmetrical. Same distance, you're not splitting apart.
arms overhead, cross at the top. Okay, last few seconds. Try to get a more height and relax. And two minutes off, final round. Again, if you want to see any other progressions or regressions, let us know in the comments. So again, just narrating out loud. I should be alright to do straight arms in the third round because I made that change in the second one. But rather than throw your toes at the pram and think session starting can't continue, your body will find a way to get around it as long as you give it time. How many people are watching? Seven. Seven. Again, we don't, we don't uh, rate you higher or lower, depending on whether, whether you watch it live or not. But we do really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to wake up with us and go through it so you've got the rest of, the, rest of your day ahead of you. And I hope that whoever is watching is also having fun with the challenges. We'll go through today's one at the end of the, end of the session after the cool down. Um, Again, it's going to be really interesting to see Performance Squad do their Thursday one to see how long it takes people to get through 100 burpees. Okay, so last 20 seconds or so, make sure you take a drink and don't break the rule about sitting down during rests. I was just testing to see if anyone would comment. Uh-huh. But you're always still too, too engrossed in recovering well. So make sure you're ready, final round, mountain climbers going less than 10 seconds. Set your kit up wherever you want it to be. And then we're gonna go in three, two, one, let's go. Incline if you have to. Keep your head neutral. Keep your core engaged. In three, two, one. Relax. It's not a bad exercise on its own, am I throwing? Single leg RDL. In three, two, one. Let's go. Ooh. You're determined to break that TV, aren't you? No. <laughs> I wonder if we'll get big enough for endorsements. <laughs> I think. Start calling out all the kit we have in the living room. Yeah. Oh, I noticed you sounds on TV. We look great on that unit. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Obviously joking. Okay, and then switch sides. Okay, make sure you're not going to annihilate any furniture behind you. Three, two, one, let's go. Just shows how much I hear myself when I talk. I don't know, advise everyone to make sure that they're safe when they do the training. So I uh, do as your coach says, not as they, as they do. Well, really important thing with this, guys, if you start to feel like you're gonna stumble a little bit, it's important, even if you wobble, you try and fight that fall, because that's what's gonna try and develop those neural pathways that create more balance. So unless it's gonna be tragic, save yourself. But if it's a little bit of a wobble, that little bit of fight is gonna help you with that more. Last rep. Ugh, stop. Straight arm planks. In three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, 
that's where they get a book, pardon me. Again, an extra cushioning might help. So you're going to push your hand down, lift your hips up. It's almost like you're trying to lift your hips too high, but just find that balance point. Try and keep your head neutral. And then we're going to relax in three, two, one. Stop. Switch sides. And then we go again in three, two, one, go. Okay, neutral head, don't droop, don't lift up too much either. So again, you're conditioning these muscles to hold your head steady. Head on, feet down position. Shouldn't be able to see my hips sticking out past my feet and hand. Three, two, one, relax. Hope my watch didn't try and tell me I was training as well. Inverted row. Three, two, one, let's go. Again, the more you lift your hips up and use your legs actively, the easier you should find these. And three, two, one, relax into dips. Three, two, one. Go. So I think I've naturally started to bring my feet closer as I go through. So it just means that every rep feels as hard as the last one. But it's still better than stopping, waiting to check that I was watching that I'm not working. Stay working hard all the way to the end. Three, two, one. Relax. Okay, finish off the star jumps. In three, two, one. Let's go. I'm worried that if anyone else has a Samsung Galaxy watch, the other day when we didn't have any hot water, it did think that I was swimming when I was in the shower because of all the flailing around trying to get the, the water to work. So again, side on. Make sure your feet do the same thing every time. Make it a bit harder. Do a higher jump. So more air time, harder landing, more work on takeoff. And relax. So, cool down time, walk around, take a drink, make sure if you're outside, you get another layer on before you start the cool down. Okay, everyone else, we're going to go into quad stretch. So I'm going to do it on the floor today. No, I'm not, because you don't, if you're breathing hard. Compress your ribcage. Much more important to try and get your breathing rate down. So again, the quicker you can get your heart rate below that threshold, the faster you'll start to recover and prepare for the rest of the, of the day. Make that transition into recovery. Like we said yesterday as well, that's a really big part of the stretch reflex. So it's to trigger some of those, those processes. So sides.
Doing them there. Hips forward. Knee just has to be in line with the other one. So on the hip stretch, you want to get your knee behind your hip. But again, that's our hip stretch. So you have to create that bigger angle to feel it there. This position, you can just squeeze your hips more to try and get a bigger stretch in front of your thigh. If anything, I'm really big. If you think about finishing a hip thrust or a glute bridge, get that kind of feeling in your hips and you'll start to notice it here. Into hamstring. So I'm gonna go straight leg raise today. Just to see if it feels more comfortable than usual after we've done those RDLs. Two, one, go. So relax. Go up again. Little hold. Relax. You might only do like five of them in the 30 seconds. The main thing is you keep your other leg straight. So go. Point your toes if it helps. Just make sure you're consistent. Make sure your lower back stays flat. And your other leg stays straight as well. So again, if I do this, it's much easier. You don't want easy, you want consistent. So you can check improve improvements. If it starts to tighten up during that, it just means that you're fatigued and need to recover. So on to hip, um, different one. So you're gonna go set yourself up for Superman or if you're a happy cat, cross your ankles over at the back and then sit away. So I've brought my right foot to the camera. So I'm gonna sit back towards my right hip so it's a bit like pigeon stretch and bent the iron cross but you've got that a little bit more control over where you go so if I do the other side down facing the camera so I'll over exaggerate left foot so you can see that over here and then you sit back to try and stick your hips out to the side the more you bring that foot across, the more you're rotating your, your femur. So the more stretch you'll feel on the outside of your hip. So you have one more from the side before I switch. So on all fours, foot across, lean out to the side slash diagonal. And it should feel the same as doing back the iron cross. Okay, so hip stretch and relax stretch. If you need hip stretch, make sure you do that after this. Kneeling lat, you have two, one. So hips and belly button between knees. Make sure your shoulder is over your knee. So even if you go like this, it comes up way to the side, it takes the stretch away. And drive your, your chest bone down to the ground. And again, start to squeeze down. So if you're in that position, try and pull your uh, pull your arm down towards your armpit, and then relax again. And switch sides, but you're not over exaggerate. So here, so it's like I'm trying to use my shoulder muscles to pull my elbow back. Squeeze for a second, relax it, and try and creep a bit more. Pull down and squeeze, relax, shake it a bit, try and go further. So again, you might feel more stretch but get further, or you might get to the same distance but have less stretch. It just tells you that you've actually made a short-term change in your mobility. And doing all this training will then make it a long-term change. You shouldn't lose any flexibility. Chest stretch. Uh, I quite like it. Let's go this one. So again, hands and knees. Just use this arm for support. Let your body weight sink down. So then actually it's your body weight creating the stretch, not you pulling. Okay, switch sides. Again, the big difference is 
because it's passive, which means you're not doing it, it's just gravity that's creating the stretch. It has a different impact on your nervous system, which means it will cause a different change to your, to your flexibility. So give it a try, make sure you try, try and do both back to back. See whether you can feel a difference afterwards between this compared to the one where you stand up and pull your uh, chest. And then relax. Okay, cool down, done. So, again, today's challenge, you're gonna be going through ownership. So 15 minute timer on the clock. 14 squats, 14 shoulder taps, and 14 push-ups. So again, shoulder taps, because it's time uh, round based, one tap of a shoulder is one rep, so it's one, two, three, seven on each side, for a total of 14. Uh, to 14 times the shoulder gets tapped in the round, and then 14 push-ups. So you do as many of those as you can, and you tell us how many rounds you completed. So even if you finish your 13th push-up, and then the time runs out, you just give us how many, you don't count that round. It's cruel, but it's there to motivate and drive you. The only other thing for me today is to remind you all to make sure that you're watching Facebook Live tonight, so you can watch Kate's second nutrition talk as part of the performance support series. Some really cool stuff, I've had a look at the slides again, again and again. Not just swimmers are gonna find this useful, anyone who's got an interest in nutrition and trying to maintain um, their, their body composition and adapt their eating around what's going on at the minute. Really vital information for you to take in and use. So make sure that you tell anyone who might be interested to check us out on Facebook Live at 6 p.m. or the YouTube channel if you can't make it live. So that's it from me today. So from everyone at Guildford City to everyone who's watching around the country, whether you're a swimmer or a parent, uh, have a great day.